We are going to look at one more momentum conservation example. In this problem, we've got a rifle firing a bullet. So we're again going to put both objects in the system, the rifle and the bullet. And here, this is more of an explosion rather than a collision. The momentum at the beginning is really going to be quite easy because I'm going to assume that before the rifle is fired, the rifle and the bullet are both sitting still. So before this problem starts, the total momentum of the system of rifle and bullet is zero kilogram meters per second. Afterwards, we know that the bullet is moving at a velocity of 550 meters per second. And it asks, what's the kickback velocity of the rifle? So we've got a rifle, whatever fired the bullet, and the rifle must be going the other direction. I know it must be going the other direction because the only way to have two objects in a system with a total momentum of zero is for the two objects to be moving in opposite directions. Therefore, I... So I'm going to start by figuring out the... Um, the bullet. The bullet has a mass of 30 grams, but we need to be consistent and always use kilograms for mass, so that would be 0 0.030 kilograms. So this bullet has a very tiny mass, but a very, very large velocity. So I'm going to represent the bullet's momentum with a very up and down, very skinny bar because the mass is only 0 0.030 kilograms, but a very long bar because the bullet has a very huge velocity, 550 meters per second. If I take those and multiply 550 times 0 0.030, I determined that the overall momentum of the bullet is positive 16.5 kilogram meters per second. And because I know that the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the rifle has to add up to zero kilogram meters per second, I know that the momentum of the rifle has to be negative 16.5 kilogram meters per second. The bar, um, the momentum bar for the rifle is going to look pretty different because the rifle has a very, very large mass and it's going to have a much, much smaller velocity in order for its momentum to be the same but in opposite directions of that of the bullet. The rifle has a 3.9 kilogram mass, and we're trying to figure out what its velocity is, but we know that the area of this little rectangle, the momentum, has to be negative 16.5. So mathematically, algebraically, momentum is mass times velocity. The momentum is negative 16.5. The mass of the rifle is 3.9 kilograms. So the velocity has to be 16.5 divided by 3.9, which is negative 4.23 meters per second. So I have determined that the velocity, the kickback velocity of the rifle, is negative 4.23 meters per second. It's worth noting that the um, because the bullet is so small, its velocity is really, really big. Even though the rifle has the exact same momentum, its velocity is much smaller because its mass is much bigger. So we're again seeing that inverse relationship between mass and velocity that we discovered on the very first day of this chapter. If we wanted to figure out the... Um, energy for the system. We could calculate kinetic energy for the rifle. It would be one half times the mass of the rifle, which is 3.9 kilograms, times the velocity of the rifle, negative 4.23 meters per second squared. 
which is 34.9 joules. And we can do the same thing for the bullet. The bullet has a mass of 0.03 kilograms and a velocity of 550 meters per second, which is an energy of 445,000 joules. So most of the energy is stored in the bullet, which because it's going so quickly, which kind of makes sense because the bullet is certainly what's going to have the ability to cause some change. If we want to think about where all of that energy was stored at the beginning of the problem, it's going to be stored in the gunpowder inside of the rifle, which is probably going to be chemical energy because there's certainly a chemical reaction that takes place when the gun is fired. So all of that energy is stored somewhere. It didn't come out of nowhere. It's stored as chemical energy at the beginning. Again, I think the most important part about this problem is just to notice the idea that if two things have equal momentums, a very small object has to have a very large velocity and a larger object has to have a smaller velocity.